Spoilers and offensive content. To come. Perhaps you've forgotten how you do these, Dave. This is Carl's and Dave Animary of the best anime review show on the internet. And what, you may ask, is the best anime review show on the internet reviewing today? We are reviewing the finale, possibly season, hopefully not series finale, of Yuri on Ice. It's 12th episode. Final skate, something to do with Barcelona. Got a super, super, supercharge it, is the title. Cool. Let's see if uh, Yuri wins like I want him to. As I've said multiple times along the way, I don't think Yuri's going to win it. Because that kind of ends his story, in a way. I think he'll take um, second or third. That's probably the safe bet. And the safe bet to win it is Yuri O, honestly. Well, now that JJ is no longer in it. <laughs> JJ self-destructed. Which happens more often than not. Sure. It, uh, realistic, realistic. It, I, I said right before that happened that I, I hope they don't cliche just have him crash and burn, but the way they had him crash and burn was very realistic. So, yeah, J, as much as I would have liked to have seen, you know, JJ, a Canadian, take the podium, <laughs> um, maybe next time. Maybe next time, maybe next time. I mean, he took all the golds on the way to it, so... <laughs> you get the feeling he's seen enough victory in his life. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, now it's time to see if we actually see both Yuri and Yurio pull off perfection. Enough talking! Let's see this happen! <laughs> that guy, that French announcer, I guess he's actually a French figure skater, mm. figure skating announcer, and that's why his Japanese is a little broken. Oh! And his French is perfect. Great. <laughs> this show really does have quite a bit of international appeal. Probably by design. Um, <clears throat> let's just talk about that here quickly. Mm. This is the most international anime that I've seen in... ever. Like, this show wasn't just made for Japan like it normally is. Mm -hmm. This... this they got everything right with the skaters from different cultures, different places, and they made sure to put in as many as possible, as would normally happen in a figure skating competition. I wonder if this is why I keep hearing that the dub of this show is amongst one of the best dubs people have been hearing, which I have been hearing. Like, I think that they're actually starting to get it, that their audience shouldn't just be Japan. Sure. And ultimately, here's the thing. This is still a Japanese show, and obviously, you know, Japanese fans of, of a show made in their own country by their own countrymen, you know, they, they should have a little more say on it than we do. Like, I, I get that. Mm -hmm. But it is nice to see something with international appeal. And one could argue that when you do set a show somewhere other than your own country, you should listen to those people. Mm -hmm. Like, um, or even demographics, like... In my own story podcast, Tales from the Orbis of Therum, which everyone should go listen to, I I have tens of fans slowly, steadily growing, and uh, a lot of my characters are women. Uh, the first people I'm going to listen to feedback of over others is going to be women. That doesn't mean male fans won't have their feedback heard. It's just, ultimately, I'm writing about a demographic I don't belong to and want more representation of regardless, so that's what I have to listen to more. So it, it's, it's a complicated thing. I, I, ultimately, I guess my rambling there is saying that, yeah, it's international and that presents a set of challenges, but these are good problems to have. Yes. So in South Park, they mentioned Yuri on Ice once, and that's oh, partly goody. why JJ's son was dressed like Cartman. It was a bit of a shout out to South Park. Okay. Now, South Park is a highly transphobic and just phobic in general show, and its creators are a good example of how saying you're neutral can actually make you an even bigger bigot than some bigots. Because when you make fun of everyone equally, the more marginalized are even more marginalized, and the less marginalized don't even feel it. So, I have seen some people get a little upset that South Park was called out in this show. And honestly, I didn't know where the call-out was. I just I just knew that it was someone dressed as Cartman. For like one second. For, for one second. Still, though, I do... I kind of get why people would be upset at that. At the same time... Grow up. 
No, not grow up. It's if Matt Stone and Trey Parker wanted to be guests on the Carlos and Dave anime rave, I'd say yeah. Let let's let's let them do that. That doesn't mean that I support their phobias or their very skewed reasoning for why they think it's okay to make fun of everyone, even the marginalized. But I mean, to succeed and grow, you sometimes have to reach out to people who aren't good. Let's put it that way. You know, there is something I can relate to here, believe it or not. And even though I, I, it's been a while since I've gone to a tournament or a Ranbat for a variety of reasons, tournament nerves are such a real thing. Mm. There are a lot of people who will watch, say, a high-level Street Fighter game between, let's just, let's just pick the, the two finalists from Capcom Cup, Knuckledoo and Ricky Ortiz. And they'll be like, Ricky Ortiz sucks, I could totally beat her. She's doing stuff that I totally beat all the time online. And they forget that under the pressure with the crowd, especially if you're on stream, it is nerve-wracking. Mm. It is super nerve-wracking. It's awesome after, like, I've watched some matches of myself that were up on stream and just listening to commenters and watching my own performance, I can improve. But just knowing that the world's watching me is just so it is it is unlike anything else to know that millions of people are watching you succeed or fail yeah so nerves are a real thing and i get that like sometimes you fuck up on the big stage and you're better than that but we're only human we're not robots nobody's a robot the most emotionless person on this planet is not a robot and it can be nerve-wracking to perform in any professional endeavor in front of a crowd. So this is my tale of how I relate to that. Oh, he fell. Oh my god. I was, I was so in there that he fell. And I feel so sad and I don't know why. <laughs> By point one, one two, two points. Wow. JJ actually still made it on the podium. Yeah, but at a distant third. Wow. Wow, that was so close. You're still right, though. Yuri, uh, Yuri Kotsky came second, so... Alright, that was episode 12 of Yuri on Ice in the finale of its first season. Hopeful question mark? <laughs> well, this show has been more than popular enough to easily get greenlit for a second season. For sure, and there's more story to tell, so... Uh, a great finale for a great season, I think. I think I'm okay with Yuri Koski getting uh, silver by a freaking hair, just missing up the gold. <laughs> and both he and Yurio had one little slip-up that they thought cost them, although in one case it did. It kind of parallels when they first met and had that competition at the uh, Hot Springs. Yeah. And um, uh, this has been a fantastic show. And so fantastic it is that it made me care emotionally about a sport I don't care about. <laughs> so, I mean, it has to be said that um, you can you can make a story resonate emotionally with an audience that normally might not care about its genre or its subject matter if you do your characters right. And, and in a way, Yuri on Ice is very simple in how it plays at your emotions and kind of presents... It's, it's competitors and it's relationships. But simple is best if you do it masterfully, right? Why, why get overly complex if you do the basics perfectly? And I think Yuri on Ice does that. I have the same gripe here as I did with the Zeta, and that's obviously because they can't, for cultural reasons, political reasons, whatever, we can't see Yuri and Victor's relationship go as far as we want visually. And I do take that away from the show no matter what its creators wanted to happen and perhaps couldn't make happen. But I, I've still been super enamored and this is, this is definitely a highlight of anime. It's one of the best ones I've seen and about subject matter I normally don't care about. So freaking kudos to Yuri on Ice. Uh, the show made me tear up a couple times, man. This is a, this is good stuff. I can't wait to, after a little bit, letting myself process this whole show, checking out its dub, which is apparently really, really good. Yeah, we'll be doing dub retrospectives for three of our four. Mm -hmm. Mainly because the force is not getting a dub for a while. Yeah, flip-floppers, right? Yeah. Yeah. And 
a lot of my thoughts mirror yours. I mean, they could have very easily screwed this up by not giving us the other skater's motivations, turning one skater into a competitive villain kind of thing. Like they could have easily <laughs> turned turned Yurio into just a je- a permanent jackass mm-hmm. who was always, you know, the typical "I'm going to kick your ass" and your whole goal in life is to beat me. No, but he's, this is a very believable and complex foil. Yes, and that's what makes all the skaters in this show so awesome to watch. Even the ones that only showed up for like one of the tournaments, mm-hmm. because they were there. We got their thoughts and ideas. We saw how they all respected certain people, what their goals were through the the dialogue. Without that you wouldn't be tearing up or mm-hmm. really give a damn. Like we, we saw characters here that, you know, just a little mistake. You're like, Oh fuck no. And I haven't cared for figure skating in years, but damn it all. This was great. And you can see why real figure skaters are pointing this and, and saying this show respected our sport. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It's... Now, granted, neither of us are figure skaters, so if any figure skaters want to come on the show and be a guest and talk about this, <laughs> just let me know. We'll, we'll we'll book you. We have a very, very... Open uh, schedule. No, shut up. <laughs> we, we have a waiting list. Uh-huh. An empty waiting list. <laughs> me, myself, and I, a thousand times down the list, do not work. But yeah, no, like, this... This show, from the music the skaters chose, to the animation on the ice, to the fact that the actual rinks actually very closely mirror the actual rinks that exist, Mm -hmm. um, just were stellar. The relationships were great. The, The fact that they can't just come out and say that they're a queer couple bugs me, but after reading a few things... I'm thinking it was less of censorship and more of the actual creator's goals. Now, we should point out that we did actually talk... We've see, we've read about and seen some input from some other anime watchers. I pointed out... I updated the last episode with a big Twitter thread by Andrea Ritsu. Yep. Shout that's where to that, Andrea Ritsu. That, that's where my research started. Where she talked about a thread on why the show couldn't go as far as it did and what she felt uh, and, and, and her criticism of that. We also reached out to a couple of our, of uh, well, I, I reached out, but I also tagged you on it to a couple of Facebook friends who live in Japan, one of whom is friend of the show, Rowan. Shout outs to Rowan. And he he had a, a whole bunch of things to say about that as mm-hmm. well. And, and he has his own opinions on this. And all, it's... I think we can safely say this is a complicated issue. It is, but I think that the biggest thing to come out of the, the different research I was looking at is the time slot itself that this was being shown at. Mm-hmm. The 2 a.m. late night block mm-hmm. has had shows that have gone much farther because that block can do that. Mm-hmm. This show, and this is why I say the creator decided to do this on purpose, not just for censorship. He's got plans. She, she, I'm pretty sure the creator of the show is a woman. I don't remember her name. Okay. The creator. <laughs> Let's use they. Let's go gender they. neutral when yep. we don't know. Um, I'm thinking it was more of their decision to to do this versus a censorship issue. Sure, sure. Now, you can still take a shot at saying, well, Damn it all, you had the chance to. Why didn't you do it? Mm-hmm. Um, but I have a little bit less of an issue of it being a creator's choice for something they're planning versus just for outright censorship because a government says buck off. Sure. I have a slightly different take on I storytellers. Yes, you would. I don't like when creative freedom is used as a crutch to excuse sameness and erasure and bad tropes in storytelling. Um, Fair enough. However, I do see your point, and one of the things about anime that infuriates me, and some animes are more guilty of this than others, is that they can be ambiguous to a fault. I have no issue with interpretive storytelling. I prefer interpretive storytelling. 
but once ambiguity goes past a certain amount mm-hmm. and there's no longer a solid basis for speculation, I get frustrated and a little annoyed because I feel that meaningful speculation, at least for me, can't exist in an area where anything goes because if anything goes, why was there even an original story to begin with? Why don't we all just use our imaginations for an afternoon and not watch anything? Yeah, I mean, you and I have talked before about how most relationships in anime are ambiguous. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter if it's queer baiting or whether it's a heterosexual relationship, anime does not like to commit to people being relationships because this somehow narrows the ha-ha factor of what they can pull off. I, I also blame anime fans on both sides of the ocean. And when I say this, I don't mean most anime fans. I mean the bad ones. The the real hardcore otaku types who, when their character, their waifus, show a romantic interest in anyone, they can no longer envision fucking them. Because they're a big demographic, and I fucking hate them. And unfortunately, much like what Bronies did with a certain show that shall remain nameless, they kind of ruin shit because they have money to give. But understandable. And one could make the argument that I, as an intelligent person, need to weigh in political and cultural reasonings for leaving it ambiguous when I review a show. Which I think I have. You th- I think we've said that quite clearly. I mean, this bottom line is this is a spectacular show that mm-hmm. pulled off in 12 episodes. I didn't think a show could do in 26, and that's make me give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. You started this show at, at episode one, kind of like, oh, we're hearing good things about this, but... I don't think I really care. And at the end of episode one, you're like, well, if you want to throw another episode on, I'll watch. I'm like, we're watching this. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's be real frank. Um, when I said if you want to throw another episode on, I was being so full of shit because <laughs> I I, know. if you were, if you said no to that, I probably would have watched this in secret. Oh, yeah. Because I was I was already hooked. Like, I mean, good storytelling is good storytelling. I was calling you on your bullshit. <laughs> and Yuri on Ice is good storytelling. It's a good storytelling. It's a good sports fiction, which uh, even even for sports I do like. I don't normally care for sports fiction. Mm. Period. It's it's well, solid storytelling. It's great characterization. It's just so good all around. And I, I think the problem with most sports anime is it's always the underdog and his team ra- raising themselves to greatness, and it's become kind of generic. And how they how they do the story to, to most of those now. It's been done in TV shows, it's been done in movies, and it's been done in anime. This managed to elevate him to greatness without really calling on a lot of the tr- the usual tropes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I think that's why. And even where they did use the usual tropes, they use them well. well. And I mean, a person working to better themselves is a trope. Well. It's well, fucking life. We should probably mention we're talking about tropes, the actual definition of the word. We're not talking TV tropes oh, here. Oh, God. No. Because fuck TV tropes. A- a- as I posted on Facebook, the fact that TV tropes is awful is its own trope now. Yeah, but, it, it, <laughs> but what I mean is there are some people who believe they made up the word trope. No, trope is a word. Yeah. Trope, is, trope means like, like a quantifiable... Observate, uh, 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 observable quality in things, right? Like, yeah. Still, though, great show. Very satisfied. Okay, well, I think we're good for this one. So, uh, check out more of our stuff at animerave.xyz. We are the best damn anime review show on the internet. We do not give up a gold medal by 0.12 points. We are the gold medal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if we did give it up, I'm sure whoever beat us definitely. Well, uh, we'll give up the we'll give up the the gold, but we'll take the platinum. Oh, we're gonna take a medal that is slightly toxic. <laughs> hey, <laughs> works for me. Is gold slightly toxic too? Hey, every metal slightly toxic. Right, right. I think you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> Tune in next time, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.